10,000 year old bread? Maybe not that old, but today we will learn about ancient grains and a visit to Living Heritage Farms. With thanks to our sponsors, Ag Enterprise Supply, located in Cheney, supplying everything you need to get the highest yields out of your crops, and State Bank Northwest, founded in Garfield and now headquartered in Spokane. State Bank Northwest offers full service banking on a first name basis. Well, we're uh, here at Living Heritage Farms, standing in front of a herd of uh, Galloway. And Jason Bishop is my guest for today. And tell me a little yeah. bit about the Galloway breed. Yeah, so the Galloway is originally from Scotland, kind of the upper regions. And the Galloway, the Shorthorn, the Hereford, uh, the Angus, they all kind of originate in the same area. And what's unique about the Galloways is they have this longer coat of hair on them. And why I chose them was because with a little extra coat, it helps them eat a little less hay in the winter. So they're a little bit more efficient. And then it also, they have less back fat, which means more marbling in the meat, which is uh, good for our taste buds. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you grew up on this farm. Yes. And you're fifth generation. Yes. Raising the sixth. Yes. But this was not where you were about 10 years ago. No, no. In fact, we were, we were over in Seattle and um, I went over there for an engineering job and I met my wife. We got married over there, had a great career. And uh, at some point, suburban life just uh, didn't turn out to be quite as rewarding as we thought it would be. And we, we started asking ourselves, well, what kind of experiences do we want our kids to have growing up? And what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, responsibilities might they have? And so we ended up coming back to the farm three years ago. And uh, I've been raising them here. And they love it. And we're glad that they love it. We love it. Um, just uh, miss the paycheck. But besides that, it's fantastic. <laughs> So you are doing some things on the farm that are a little different than some people do. I mean, there's a this is primarily a grain farm, you know, yes. but uh, you've got the brought the cattle back, yes. and uh, tell us a little bit about the you know why have why have cattle? You know, why do people move away from having multi? Yeah, and... yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of history to that. Um, this having cattle and grain would have been very common a hundred years ago. And the reason for it was that they are, there's a symbiotic relationship between the animals and the crops. So the animals, they will, they will fertilize the ground and the, they're also fed from the, the, the grasses that grow on the ground. And so what, what, when we came back to the farm, we thought, well, maybe there'd be a way to, to do something differently. And uh, we needed to make more with less because our farm is, is large enough to support one family, but two families is stretching. And, you, and your, your folks are still here? Yes, you know, my father and mother are still farming. And so we thought, well, maybe we could start the cattle enterprise and introduce that as a, as a, a, a stream of cash flow. And um, then I started reading about the benefits of having cattle integrated with the cropland and uh, seeing stories about um, innovative farmers back in the, in, the, in the Midwest and up in the Dakotas areas. And they're doing some amazing things, rebuilding their soils with the cattle. And I think a cow is a magnificent creature because they can, they can take stuff like this and they can eat it and then it turns into dairy and meat, which is just incredible. And I'd rather have the steak and the ice cream I, than eat that one. I think so. Yeah. In fact, um, we, and the other amazing thing is that they, they out the back end, they throw life with this uh, amazing compost of biology that they put on the ground. And um, over the years of, of farming the conventional methods, which is really rather new. I mean, we all used to have organic farms 100 years ago. But what was conventional is not conventional anymore. And the conventional methods today, they actually hurt the biology in the soil. So in order to bring the biology back, the cattle and what they put on the ground is doing that. And so we're really interested in integrating the livestock with the, the soil and the crop rotation so that we'll be bringing that life back to the soil 
so that we won't be so dependent on all these chemical inputs. Okay, and right now you're, uh, you're feeding them some supplemental feed here in the winter and you're using, yeah. even how you're feeding, you're using as a way of yeah. changing the landscape. Yeah, for sure. So, um, unfortunately, uh, the, if you just look behind here, we have lots of sagebrush and this has been, sagebrush has been growing for decades, scores. And uh, the problem is, is it's, it doesn't have the natural cycle of a fire. And so the fire would be something that would balance the sagebrush to grass ratio. And then also, because the way the, the cows have been managed on the property in the past, it's called continuous grazing. They're allowed to go pick and choose wherever they want all over the pasture. That also is detrimental to the grasses. And so what happens is a lot of overgrowth of sagebrush. So what we're doing here is we're putting the, the, the hay bales on top of the sagebrush bringing the animals in, they are crushing and trampling it so that what is a thick uh, area of sagebrush looks like these sticks around us now. This is where I fed last year. And then you're going to start to see the seeds from the hay bales start to grow new grass the next And, next and shift that proportion of sagebrush to... Yes, to exactly. Grass. So it's more productive and, and you sequester a lot more carbon with grasses than you do with woody plants. So that's, that's another benefit really bringing those sugars back down in the soil. Well, uh, you also mentioned you just got a new brand. Uh, they're, they're turning the wrong direction to see the brand right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's one back there, uh-huh. Yeah, so I, uh, I, we, we rebranded our cattle, which is kind of a process. I didn't realize it would take so long. <laughs> because you have to register the brand and go through all the paperwork. Yes, yeah, a lot of paperwork. And uh, so we ended up choosing uh, a symbol that it looks like a C and a two. But what it's supposed to stand for is uh, CO2, carbon dioxide. Uh, just as a reminder for us that what we're trying to do is pull carbon dioxide from the air and put it back in the soil where it really is supposed to be and where it came from. So um, that's just kind of the, the motivation behind uh, what we're trying to do here. Okay. Come on down to the granary yes. to see where you're, you're storing this stuff. And I have a handful of which wheat, which wheat do I have? This, this is red fife. And so this is uh, a grain that the story, the legend is that somebody from the Baltic region, maybe Ukraine, came over and brought this wheat back in, oh, I think it was the 1860s. And uh, it really caught on. And it was the most dominantly grown wheat variety in North America for a decade or two, back in the late 1800s. And they really liked it because that was about the same time that the advent of the rolling mill came along. Because before they used to use mills like this, which is a, a stone mill. And they had a hard time milling really hard grains. Well, with the uh, rolling mill, they could, they could mill these really uh, tough grains with steel. And it would really uh, do a good job uh, turning that into flour. Okay. And they like those because it's really high protein. Higher protein usually means more gluten. More gluten means stronger strength of the bread, which means more air can be held, which means a bigger rise. So that was kind of the story behind Red Fife and okay. why it caught on. So you've brought Red Fife back, but you also, you've got a handful of something else in right yeah. there. And that looks really different. It looks like wild rice to me. This is, is einkorn. It's the original wheat and Modern wheat is, is a, it's a hybrid. So if you could imagine uh, a horse and a donkey make a mule, right? Right. So that's a tetraploid. Wheat is a hexaploid, which means it takes another step further. So take that mule and then cross it with a zebra and whatever that comes in. So it's got genetic information of three different species within it. Mm. This einkorn is just one. It's the original wheat. It's much more simple. And uh, we don't grow a lot of this because it's not very productive. And every grain has a hole, a thick hole around it. And inside is a tiny little grain that it takes a whole lot of to make bread out of. But the reason why people are growing it again is because they think our bodies tolerate the gluten in a better way. And also because um, there's more nutritional value in it. Okay. So there's, that's why the interest is is rising in those. And so you started the ancient grains as part of the operation as 
also is another enterprise yes. into the... Yeah, I was hoping to find, we could find some niche market to, to grow these. But the challenge of these niche markets is uh, getting them to scale. We started with a very small amount of seed and to get them to a point where you could run a combine over them is a big, long process. The other problem is the hole. We've lost the uh, industries that would be able to strip this hole off of it and everything has been all the conglomerates around us, uh, the milling companies, they don't want to mess with anything like this anymore. And there's no machines around. If they do, they look like this and there's in somebody's barn. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Like yours. Yes, yes, very much so. Yeah. But you have found some markets for it. I know that you've got yeah. a website up so that you're able to sell some products. Yeah, we've been selling the, the Red Fife, which is an easy sell because it's already de hold and we can grow a decent amount of it. and. Um, and we, we, we grind it ourselves for flour and eat our own bread, sourdough bread with it, and we love it. So uh, we're really happy with it. And, okay. yeah. Well, where would somebody find your website? They would find it at www.livingheritagefarms, plural, farmsplural.com. That sounds like a great story. Oh. Welcome back to the farm. Well, thank you very much. It's good to be here. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks for watching this episode of Ag Stories. This episode is sponsored by Ag Enterprise Supply, located in Cheney and Wilbur, supplying everything you need to get the highest yields out of your crops. And State Bank Northwest, founded in Garfield, now headquartered in Spokane, State Bank Northwest offers full-service banking on a first-name basis.